in the 1950s, African Americans were not allowed in casinos as customers. They were entertainers. So the gaming community allowed African Americans who were well known entertainers worldwide to have a stage here in Las Vegas. But for African American businessmen who wanted to own gaming establishments, at that time it was not possible for that to happen on the Las Vegas Strip or downtown. So African Americans with all of the creativity going on built their own strip. It was called Jackson Avenue. So on Jackson Avenue, you had places like the Brown Derby, Love's Cocktail Lounge, lots of other places whose names will pop up as I'm talking about these places. The Town Tavern was one of those last places in existence. Did not go out of business until the later 2000s. So African-Americans who wanted to have opportunities of owning a gaming establishment, they did it in that historical West Side. So today we call it the historic West Side community. There was a, a business corridor and on that business corridor called Jackson Street and some of the cross streets like D, E and F, you will find gaming establishments that allowed the black community access to good music, access to gaming, and access to very good food sold in some of those places, and entertainers. So the entertainers on the Las Vegas Strip that could not stay in, the, on the, in those hotels where they were performing, they would then go to the West Side and they would engage in all kinds of jam sessions on the West Side. So even though African-Americans could not pay their money and go to see an entertainer at the Sands or the Dunes, Desert Inn or other places, they could see that same entertainer on Jackson Avenue in the West Side community. The Moulin Rouge, built in 1954, opened in 1955 allowed African-Americans not just a place where they could enjoy entertainment, but it was also a place now with housing. So the Moulin Rouge had hotel rooms, giving African-Americans another way of enjoying the community's resources here in this city. So at one time, if an African-American wanted to come here and stay in a really wonderful place, they stayed at a boarding house on the west side. They could not stay at a place that could rival the sands, the dunes, the desert inn, those kind of places, but now, 1955, there is the Moulin Rouge. So if you are Sammy Davis Jr. or Nat King Cole, and you cannot stay at the Thunderbird or the Sands, you can now stay at the Moulin Rouge, a place that rivals those strip casinos on every level, meaning that the food was as good, the entertainment was exceptional, the gaming, amenities were wonderful. So all of that was in the local community. Now, when you come, when you start talking about what that does for the community, it gives you pride in your community that now the engine that drives Nevada, you have that engine right there in your community. It also encouraged the community to build other places that could rival those locations on the Las Vegas Strip. So we see other places that are um, wonderful places that the, that the community could stay. The Carver House, which became the Cove, was one of those places. And that was on Jackson Street. 
And then we have the Jackson Hotel. So just like competition is sometimes unhealthy, competition is also healthy. It meant that other people now wanted to invest in the black community. So that's what we see happening uh, in the 50s going into the 1960s.